Hi everybody, welcome back to Sprueverse, my scale model universe. And back on the bench is the Ares 1B from Mobius. This is from the Motion Picture 2001 A Space Odyssey. If you're just finding me for the first time, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe, it means an awful lot to me. But also, this is the third part of this series. So if you really want want to know what this is all about, go back to the beginning and watch. Now, I know the first couple of episodes were a bunch of white plastic, and you're probably sitting there going, Phil, nothing happened. Not true. Um, you know, these kits are a labor of love, um, and sometimes there are degrees of difficulty to things and engineering issues and fit issues and paint issues. And, uh, you know, oftentimes you, you have to have a game plan, especially if you're going to light something, because ultimately it will make a huge difference. Now, um, a bunch of things I want to talk about at the top of this, um, at the top of this hour um, is that there's a couple of things that struck me with this kit that I found a little disappointing, and, and, and I'll, sh I'll share those with, with you. Um, but I suppose the first one is, is, you know, you get this interior. And yes, uh, if you've seen the film and you've, you've seen my, um, you know, my, my uh, research episode, uh, you'll know I went to an awful lot of detail about the exterior of the ship. Um, but I didn't really bother to go into an awful lot uh, about the uh, the the interior and part of that was because I, I was sort of disappointed to be honest with you um, I, I, I felt that you know the design of this is such that it, it's not easy to remove the lid uh, there's not very many opportunities to, to sort of leave it just sitting there so that you can pull it um, primarily because uh, the wiring harness for this is going to drop down the center of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, elevator or that, that that allows you to come into the passenger compartment and i guess will also take you up to the cockpit one level above why you need an elevator god only knows but there you go we've got one and um we have this uh this sort of indent with these steps up which is obviously you know great for uh I suppose for a proscenium, it gives the actors something to do. And then you've got these 24 seats that are all facing windows or television screens. Now I've got my television screens all uh, ready to go. Um, here's one that I'll show you on the, uh, the close-up camera here. here. Here they are. And uh, now you can light them if you want to. Um, I'll put a light in there so that you can see. Uh, they'll pop on quite nicely. You can pop them off and pop them on. Um, now, I suppose you could argue and say that, you know, as you're staring through these windows, uh, you might see a television screen on. Uh, f frankly, um, I kind of lost interest in that reality. Um, now, a lot of you won't, and you should go for it. You know, there's a lot of opportunities in here. You could light the interior of the... Um, the elevator shaft so you've got some glow on the door um, you could actually cut a hole in the in the door and finish the interior um, th there's lots of things you can do but uh, sadly this kit is not designed uh, to have a, a removable top very easily at least not from my skill level um, I'm sure there is a way to do it with some contact you know some copper uh, touch points for contact so that when it touches them uh, the it will light up the top of the ship um, and then you know like a connection switch but um, I'm not going down that road because to be brutally honest with you um, I, d I don't ever anticipate uh, uh, looking inside this now, I'm gonna take some photos for posterity but I don't think I'll look inside um, so things that was one of the things that I was sort of disappointed uh, about uh, the second thing I was disappointed about, and I've talked to you a little bit about this, is decals. I really felt that we were kind of uh, shorted on, on the decals. Um, the interior ones, you, 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 most of them you, you just will not see. 
um, including, you know, I including the, uh, the uh, you know, the ones that appear on the, on the ceiling here, which if you remember um, here, and I'll get this on the close-up so you can, I'll try to get, get one in. Hang on here, bear with me. There they are. Um, you know, the, these decals, which ultimately, you know, they look cool and uh, they're very sort of Kubrick-esque, but, but sadly, we're not going to see them. So again, you know, that's one of those frustrating things. Fun to put it together, fun to have that moment to yourself, <laughs> but then, you know, uh, away you go. Um, one of the other uh, interesting aspects of these kinds of kits is in the film, as we know, and we've talked about this, is the cockpit itself, um, and I'll put this back on B for you, uh, glows red. And then um, the exterior, uh, they, they're white. You know, they're, it's a white light on the windows. And the filming miniature itself, you, you can see that quite clearly. And, and so that's about the extent of it. Now, there are some interior points of view from the cockpit that... Uh, allow you to, you know, to see that sort of, you know, out the cockpit. And there's a couple of points of view of, um, from, from inside the, uh, the, uh, the passenger compartment where, um, you can see out, out the windows. And, uh, but that, that, that's about it. Uh, for me, it really is about having this next to, uh, the EVA pod. Um, certainly building the, 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 the clipper ship again at, and definitely having a moon bus. So you have that 2001, and, you know, and of course you've got how the computer that's been out. So I think we're very well represented. But um, anyway, it was just disappointing to me that we, we didn't have any more decals uh, for the exterior because there are a couple of opportunities to have some decals that, uh, that, uh, from, from noticeable uh, little sort of moments now I uh, where, where they are actually on on the filming miniature now I found some little decals that I had in my uh, I'm not going to tell you where I got them because <laughs> I don't remember but <laughs> but these little red uh, circles two of these will fit beautifully um, beautifully right there and in the filming uh, miniature, they, they exist there. So, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> this uh, ceiling is lighting up well. Uh, looks kind of cool. Um, and I've got, um, I'll open this up for you so you can see what I did. What I did was, was, was um, I put uh, some strip lighting here. You can see here, I'll put this on the side camera. Um, there you can see my strip lighting and uh, what's drying at the moment is the cockpit because uh, that needs to go in um, the window glass needs to go in um, now I did uh, put a little bit of um, uh, the, the floor polish on, on that uh, Johnson floor polish just to clean it up it had a, a few minor scratches on it but it looks really good it's drying uh, that'll go in and then my light blocked cockpit will go in um, which has its red light uh, LED red lights in there I use the zero five uh, uh, zero eight zero five uh, red um, I use two of those strips one at the top of the cockpit and one on uh, on the on the uh, the floor of it um, uh, uh, where where the, uh, uh, the the feet of the so-called so uh, pass uh, uh, ugh, pilot and co-pilot are. I apologize. Which leads me to my other complaint, which is no no um, pilot and co-pilot to sit in the seats. Uh, now, I, we can find some for this scale, I'm pretty sure, uh, but um, I don't have the time to do it, nor the inclination, but it's kind of sad. They should be there, and, and uh, a lot of you, I hope you um, uh, decide to do that, uh, because there should be some figures uh, included in this kit. 
uh, especially when you look through the windows, because you see Bowman sitting at the seat and then you can see the flight attendants bringing the food, you know, with the tray. That would have been really cool. Um, and you could see that inside because it's a quintessential moment in the film. But alas, we don't have it. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the, the, uh, the only... Um, the only other thing that I that I would say is, um, and it's curious to me, and and I want <laughs> I want to be honest about it. Now, my dear friend Lou uh, Dalmeso over at Aztec Dami is building this kit. Um, he started building it um, um, a little bit before me, so uh, he jumped in the race. I I don't like doing this. I I, I really don't like it when. 40 of us are all building the same kit because I just, uh, I don't know, you know, there's, there's too many places to go and I think it just dilutes the value of every, of it. Of it. I, you know, usually I like to take a beat and go in another direction and then come back and try it after everyone else has built it. And I, I've just had a lot of success with that. But this time I just got, you know, giddy as a schoolboy because this kit had been delayed for so long that I just thought, why not? Let's all jump in and but anyway, but um, I digress, as I usually do. But I wanted to, now this is gluing up, uh, so I have to be super, super careful. Um, but um, I, uh, I've locked in my legs, um, but the reason why I'm turning this over is because I want to do a mea culpa. <laughs> I want to share something with you, because I think it's really important. Now, uh, I'm going to point out the uh let me just move that out the way um do you see these gaps in here where i'm pointing do you see them these four gaps now in those four gaps were these these Now, Lou <laughs> was kind enough to leave a comment on my video. And, you know, he's my guru, so anything he says goes. I, I, I don't take anything he says personally. If he thought it was a dog's breakfast, then it's probably a dog's breakfast. And I, I learned from that. Uh, but, you know, when Lou speaks, I listen. And he left a comment on uh, part, actually, uh, for part one, because um, oh, when I'm telling you this, part two hadn't aired yet, has not, ha had not have aired. But um, he said, Phil, don't forget part 68, there's sprue that needs to be cut. And I'm going, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, it was those. It was these things. And I swear to you, they look like part of the armature to me. I, I, and there's no, you know, you, you see on the instructions that clearly they're gone, but they don't tell you to remove them. You, 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 you've, got to, you, you've got to use your initiative to do, to do that. I don't have any. So a big thank you to the guru, um, my Swami, Lou Dalmeso over at Aztec Dummy, who <laughs> reminded me to remove them. And I'm reminding all of you to remove them. If you're going to build this up, part 68 has three sprue attachments on the inside of the lower armature legs that have got to be snipped. Heads up. Anyway, uh, so um, everything is gluing now. Um, and so I'm, 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 I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. I'm, 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 um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle uh, the feet. Um, now, I wasn't set up, shame on me. Uh, so let me uh, just dive in here for a second and show you something because I think it's valuable. I'm going through my, my detail shots. Now, if you haven't done it, um, check out my special edition, uh, which is showing you all the extreme close-ups from the filming miniature that um, I actually took for you. And I, I, and I also show you some photos and reference material from the books. So it's kind of fun. It's a, it's a special edition. Check it out. And um, I hope it's helpful to you. Uh, but here it is. It's the foot. And uh, now, a, a lot of this can be chalked up to age. 
Uh, but what you can see very clearly is at one time, these feet were two shades of, of gray, a light gray and a dark gray. Um, and then they, uh, they had a very soft kind of white over them. And if you look really carefully on this particular shot, you will notice where there has been p paint peeling um, and some discoloration and some aging. Now they've clearly left that alone, but the reality of it is, is that, you know, that's, that's the, f the, the foot. So um, what I'm doing is, is the next thing I'm going to do is tackle, uh, <coughs> tackle the, uh, the, the, these feet. I've been doing a lot of painting and a lot of weathering and it is starting to come together. I've not done anything to the sides um, yet. I will work on that and then I'll get the dome on here. Um, and um, when, as soon as I've done that, uh, we can do some test lighting, okay? Well, there's an old adage, the lights are on, but no one's home. <laughs> and that definitely applies here. Uh, no one's home. There are no figures inside of this to uh, to really sort of give you that 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 sense of life. And the windows are large enough that uh, you can't you can see you would see figures in the windows. So uh, I would highly recommend if you're going to do this uh, for yourselves, find some scale figures uh, that will will work in here. I think you'll be happier to see uh, a pilot in the pilot seat, co-pilot perhaps some of the uh, flight attendants and, and uh, definitely um, the lone um, passenger sitting in here. Um, and you know, you can even put the TVs on. But anyway, this is a, this is a lighting test of the kit as it, as it sort of is built up out of the box, except uh, with the augmentation of obviously ceiling lights and your classic Kubrick red lights in the cockpit. Um, now, it, it, it's not sufficiently dark enough in the studio, even with all the lights off, believe it or not, to, um, uh, I don't think, oh, let me, let me see if I can kill that one. Maybe that helps as well, uh, a little more. Uh, now, it's a 12-volt system, and it, it's firing quite well, and I'm super thrilled, by the way, with the amount of light I am getting from my LED strips that I put in the ceiling. They are really doing a fantastic job of lighting the entire passenger cockpit. And my six 0805, 0508 uh, SMDs red strips in the cockpit are really doing a number as well. So uh, this may not be uh, uh, giving it all of the credit that it's due, but here's the test. So you can see uh, our, our Kubrick cockpit lights are red, and that's really quite cool. And if I tip it, uh, actually, let me do this. Let me get you closer here for the to look through the windows. Now, of course, this is not sealed properly, um, but you can see there's a sufficient amount of light coming through here from the ceiling. Super happy, super happy. But I'm also here to tell you, uh, you can see uh, the caution lights um, if you look in the windows from the uh, you know caution gravity you can see them so if you if you really peer in these windows there is a lot to see so if you wanted to add a few more blinkies um, I think it may well be worth it but uh, the only other thing I wanted to say to you guys is that these legs are super super fragile I'm going to be uh, displaying mine in a slightly raised position as if it's landing on clavius so uh, I don't have to worry about that. I've got some light leak issues, and I've uh, and I definitely don't think that I'm going to be able to uh, to seal this in such a way that I can, you know, not glue it. I have an umbilical cord cord in the center of this where the wires are going straight through and down the the bottom here. Uh, let me show you that on the on the overhead you can see there's my umbilical cord and it's going to go that's where my stand is going to go so um i've, I've got a, a, a quite a bit more um of of shading to do and i've got uh, a lot of cleanup to do before and obviously my my sh my blast shields uh, are not on and i haven't done final weathering uh, but this was primarily just sort of a lighting test, really, and uh, super, super thrilled with, with what I've been able to accomplish just with a basic lighting setup. Um, you could definitely go to town with this and have a lot more fun with it, that's for sure. Uh, so here it is. 
uh, just to give you a quick look around here and uh, show you uh, what what it looks like in uh, in this state before we do the final final uh, seal and reveal as it were so um, there you go that's uh, that's the lighting test with a big thumbs up we'll seal this up uh, do a final weathering on it get it on its base and do a final reveal and and I'll, I'll give you some some final thoughts on it okay well it uh, definitely is one of my favorite subjects uh, and I really enjoyed putting this kit together and, and doing a build-up of it. It's funny how, uh, I, and, and I, I have to be really careful here because <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to get a little jaded. You know, when you start building as many kits as I've started to build, you really start looking at them with a different eye. And I've got to be very careful about that because I don't want this uh, channel to turn into Critic's Corner. Uh, now, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to talk about my experience and, and, or lack of it <laughs> when it comes to, to the build-up. And I think that's really important. You know, as I grow and figure out um, which subjects I'm really passionate about and which ones I, I'm good at and which ones I, I need a lot, lot more work at, uh, then that's that's something that I'm definitely going to uh, definitely going to play with. This is one of those films, you know, iconic films that we now have uh, a terrific amount of, of material in, in the model space to, to play with. Um, so if you want the uh, the Pan Am uh, shuttle, it's out there. Uh, if you want the Moon Bus, it's out there. Uh, Howl is out there. And of course, uh, now uh, the Ares 1B is out there and in, in a beautiful scale. So I think it was definitely worth uh, waiting for. I've talked a little bit about my disappointment uh, with the decals. Um, and uh, there were some other detail issues. One I didn't get to that I want to share with you because um, I think it's, it's fun. Take a look here at the window. Um, I, I want you to take a look at the very bottom of the window because it has this scalloping that is not on our kit. And uh, so that was a, a, a little bit of a disappointment for me. Um, so, you know, that's definitely something that I think uh, will be accurized if, um, if and when a... Um, uh, if and when Paul comes out with a photo etch set, uh, and I'm sure he will, I'm hoping that's one of the things they'll accurize. Um, there also uh, are some other details that are, are worth crisping up. Um, g getting getting back to this, uh, let me let me um, sort of shrink uh, shrink you out and pull you back in here. Uh, getting back to this detail. Uh, there's uh, there's a lot more to be done. Um, and you can see there are definitely markings here. This is what I was talking about uh, that uh, we don't have. Uh, now, these are not difficult to, to actually put on here. Um, and in fact, uh, possibly if Lou, uh, if you're watching this, if, if he does a, uh, a, a, a masking set for this, which he most likely will, perhaps in a black vinyl, he'll include some of those little, uh, little um, tick marks or you could certainly add them with a marker if you've got a, a steady hand. So that those are also additional things that that we could do to this. But you know, as we as we sort of go around here, um, I, I think it's it's really important to remind us all how cool this is. Uh, it's got a great cool factor, and I'm you know I'm definitely thrilled with this this um, this model. I mean, there, there's no question to me. Uh, that this was definitely worth, um, worth us tackling. Um, and, you know, from a weathering perspective, um, I, I think uh, you'll agree that there are definitely some, um, some, some opportunities here uh, to, do, to do some weathering. Um, like, for instance, on the side here, uh, where I've, I, I've put uh, weathering on the... Um, the, the the shields here that come out of the um, the uh, armature leg plate covers. 
Um, and as you can see here, this is the actual filming miniature. Um, and this is what, what I've been doing. So, I, I, you know, I've, I've done some things here where I've subtly copied uh, the filming miniature. Um, the, uh, even down to uh, these, these little uh, side blast thrusters uh, in, the, in the filming miniature. They're not metal. They're, they're sort of dirtied up. So there's a weird part of me. I, I don't know what it is. You know, I, I'm a, I, I just love to age things. And so th that's what I've started to do here. I started to age, uh, age it appropriately and make it look like something that nobody really <laughs> intended it to look, look like. But for my collection and for my eye, that's what I wanted. You'll do what you want to do. But uh, <clears throat> overall, it, it was a lot of fun. And, and I'm, I'm going to be a betting man here and I'm going to make a prediction that uh, most, most people most people, and I'm sticking my neck out here, will actually lock these legs in the landed position. They'll lock them in because no one's going to want to play with them, the opening and the closing of them, and it, and it gets too fragile and something will snap. So my guess is, yes, you could try and lock them in that position, but if you're going to let it stand on its own weight um, th over time, that it could collapse, especially if you're putting other stuff into it. I don't know. So... Um, I would I, I would bet that most people will 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 get these in the lock position. That that's just me. Uh, so anyway, um, that's it for the Aries One B build. Thanks for coming along. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It means an awful lot to me. Uh, detail photos uh, and uh, my daily log are on Instagram as always. And. Um, so I'm, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, um, I'm, I'm sad to see this one go, but I'm glad that it's um, going to be on the shelf with the rest of my uh, 2001 collection. Uh, so there you go. As always, guys, I wish all of you well. Please be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.